photon. <laughs> Anyways, uh, me being stupid. Uh, spawn points. It's one thing I never really got into. Um, <clears throat> okay, so right now, like this is our little play scene I made, right? <clears throat> There's nothing special to it. So if I open a scene, uh, the main title, sure we'll save that, why not? We have, we have one kind of issue, sort of. Um, there's different ways to kind of go about this. Well, piles of different ways, right? So we have this really, really annoying movement system of a character controller I've built. And, you know, it's there. But they, we, we spawn in that same spot. So... <clears throat> Uh, if you want anything to do with multiple scenes, uh, this system here isn't really the best system. And allow me to demonstrate this. Let's create a canvas. And this can be player main. So we still want that, but we want this one too. And we'll we'll put a camera in this. Sure. Uh, yeah. Okay. And let's let's deactivate it. <clears throat> so in this guy, we're gonna put. Here is uh, is mine. So if this is mine, oh, son of a, you know, we want to activate our system here. Okay. <clears throat> so let's activate that for now. Actually, you know what else we could do if it's not mine? Uh, you always could just leave it open, I suppose, and do the same thing. But if it's not mine, you know, deactivate it. We don't want to see it if it's somebody else's. <clears throat> so, why would I do such a crazy little thing? So, let's say you have a UI button. And let's go 2D. And let's make two of them. This guy can be spawn right. This guy can be spawn left. Now we've activated it. Let's just finish that. So we've set up our UI. Oh, I guess that's the other thing we want to do. We want to deactivate those. Well, I'll we'll leave them on active for now. But I mean, we're going to want to do that same thing. Actually, you know what would be easier than all of that? Just stick all this crap in here. There. Because now we can just deactivate this guy or activate this guy. And everything kind of just goes with it. <clears throat> there. Problem solved. So, why would I do such a crazy little thing? So let's say UI button array. And I'll, I, you don't have to use a button array. I'm just just demonstrating something. So the this button is on the right side. So so right and left. There we go. So we have right 
oh crap and we have right and we have left all right so what do we want if we go right well let's let's random float uh, I don't know, go negative two by two, store that as X, copy, paste, store that as Z, and then <coughs> vector three, add X, Y, Z. So we're gonna take a vector three variable, right position, we're going to add our x. And this is just to give it a little bit of randomness to it. Uh, you don't have to do this randomness part if you don't want. And then, uh, let's set a vector three variable. To spawn position, we'll use our right position. Even though I spelt right completely wrong. Finish. Now let's copy that. Go left. And here we're going to use our left position. And we're going to fill it with our left position here. So we're still using the spawn position. We're just filling it with different things. All right. So now, now we can photon instantiate. Where is... What the hell's the name of that action? Let's go over here. Let's see the name. Pun instantiate, sorry. Actually, let's just copy that guy. No, we have to leave him there. Uh, but let's copy him anyways. And ba -doop. only now, uh, not, we're not using the level manager. We're going to use our spawn position. So let's define those two spawn positions. So the left position, uh, we'll say is, we'll use the starting point of the map when we all go over to the right just a bit. So we're, you know, not right on the edge of the map. And then this guy, let's go over, oh, I guess we also have that random. So let's, let's move these guys up so we don't fall off the map. Well, let's move him like way over there. So this guy's kind of more on the left, this guy's more on the right, hence the names. And we'll spawn to that position. And we're gonna store that as our player. So now we have a reference to our player. So, and, and this, is, this is really good to have, you have this reference, because now if, if we kill our player who is spawned, we could kill him, we could destroy him, we could throw him out. This guy here, the actual main, can be persistent, right? <clears throat> uh, along different scenes and all sorts of stuff. But we can, this guy here can kind of control what happens to your avatar when they die or they maybe they completely change units or something. Who knows? Uh, but you have this little kind of personalized manager for your player. Okay. So let's close all that. So let's add a playmaker photon view and a photon view. I don't know if it needs them both. I think it does. I don't know. All right, so now let's get rid of that. 
and I forgot to turn that off okay so now instead of bringing in the player let's bring in the player manager pretty simple right I think so save that okay so now let's let's just test this let's go to our plate nope let's go to our title scene sorry I guess I don't need that so let's you know okay we're online let's you know go into a random room so we have okay so I, I need to have this thing on there I gotta fix that but I have not now I have this like I have this whole thing right so I can go that and if you look at the scene where my player is come out of 2d like I'm way over here All right beyond that the player himself still works fine um, <clears throat> so we got a couple things we need to fix so he needs a playmaker photon game object that was the thing game object proxy okay there you go mr. playmaker you can have it oh all okay, right so now now that we're here uh, the other thing we're gonna want to do so we can't you know screw things up let's deactivate uh, this thing we, we can leave this logic running kind of in the background Alright, so let's test that. Do, do, do. Okay, go on the internet, go on that, and we're, we can. Okay, I'm gonna spawn left this time. We don't have any errors this time, so we go left. And I'm inside the cube. Go figure on that, eh? Such precision spawning. So, um, let's save and let's do a build. And we, we just gotta know that the guy spawning on the left is from where I put it, you're gonna end up in the cube. <clears throat> so it looks kind of funny. Uh, obviously, you wouldn't normally do that in the game. Mind you, <coughs> in the game, if you got some big crazy square trigger that's using a default v values like that, I'd we kind of question things player two that's his name and this guy is player one so he's gonna go and he's gonna go so we have these two things right so this guy can say spawn on the right and this guy we're over here we're gonna spawn on the left but there now we have it we're in two different spots right the rest of the logic still the same you know everything's good uh, but we, we now have a uh, different spawn points oh, I don't have his name that's okay right and, and you can also do random or whatever the case may be but that's kind of how you could do a spawn point. Now, you could also have it then where, I didn't set this logic up, uh, but if, if you were to die, you could send an event to this thing, right? Like your player could send an event to your manager saying, hey, I died. Then this guy could be like, oh, you know, let's, let's go back to this thing and respawn you. Kind of thing or, or whatever the case may be there, there's there's different piles of different things you can do but that's how we can get um, kind of a better layout having 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 a manager for your player um, and using your player more as just an avatar to rep to represent you in the world but you're this thing instead it offers more flexibility and more power but it makes it easier to do things such as um, spawn points.
and so forth. So anyways, hopefully you enjoyed the short video, and we'll talk to you in the next one.